Welcome to our home group. We're so glad that you've joined me and Joel and Denise tonight. And this week, we've been answering different kinds of questions submitted to us by you and by others. And wow, we have had such a great time. And by the way, welcome, Denise. Welcome, Joel. Thank you, Rick. And home group, let me say welcome to you. You're the important ones. We are so glad that you're with us. And Joel, welcome. It is so good to be with you all. And thank you, home group, for joining us. But before we get into home group, if you need prayer, please call us at one 800 742-5593 or email us at prayer at reno.org. We believe in the power of prayer, don't we, Mama? Oh, absolutely. Because we see answers to prayer. Mm -hmm. And our God is a living God. And the Bible says that his arm is not short and his ear is not deaf. And he hears your prayers. Amen. Well, tonight we're going to be focusing on healing. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be answering five questions submitted to us by you. If we don't know the answer, we're going to tell you we don't know the answer. But... Let's begin, Joel. Okay, so let's start with number one. Okay, first of all, do you have your Bibles? I have mine. Okay, oh. we're going to use our Bibles. Our Bible. You always have to have your Bible when you come to our home group. All right, Mr. Renner. Okay, so question number one. All right. If it's God's will to heal and someone prays in faith and believes in the promises of God, then how do we explain why healing doesn't come? Well, that is a marvelous question, and there are different reasons why healing doesn't come. Some of, the, some of the answers are very simple. If you're praying for a person who doesn't believe in healing, they're probably not going to receive. Mm-hmm. Y'all never forget years ago, whenever I was ministering in a prayer line in western Oklahoma, and a man and woman came forward, and the anointing of God was present to heal the sick. People were being healed. Denise and I were laying hands on people. And this man and wife really had some serious physical problems. And I said, are you ready to receive your healing? They said, no, we don't even believe in healing. (laughs) I said, then why did you come forward? They said, because the people who brought us to this meeting told us to get up and come down to the front. I didn't pray for them because I knew that if I prayed for them, there wouldn't be any results. They didn't even believe in it. They didn't even want me to touch them. So they turned around, they went back to their seat sick. If you're praying for somebody who is against healing, who doesn't believe in healing, probably they're not going to receive. Sometimes people don't have the faith to receive. Sometimes people can't receive from the Lord because of deeper issues that blocks the healing process. Unforgiveness, bitterness, those things really clog the pipe and make it difficult for you to receive anything from the Lord, not just healing anything from the Lord. Denise? Well, you know, many, many years ago, I had a bitterness and unforgiveness in my heart. And... um, and, and I was having symptoms in my body. Uh, I was having panic attacks. My hands were painfully cold all, all the time. And my feet and my face began to be cold. I was so, uh, fear was like a vice over my head. Now, if I'd gone to the doctor, I'm sure they would have said, oh, you need this medicine, you need that medicine. Well, I didn't go to the doctor because I, I, I just went to this. I just went to the Word of God, and I poured my, my eyes upon this Word and my ears hearing this Word. Denise, I just want to say that you really dove deep. Oh, I did. I mean, I saw you grabbing the Word of God, getting up in the prayer, seeking God for your healing. I mean, I, I, I will never forget that. Well, I was desperate for my healing, and, and, you know, I could have said, well, He's not healing me. I mean, months passed. Well, He's not healing me. Well, it must not be God's will to heal me. That is absolutely not the truth. It's absolutely God's will to heal you because of what Jesus did on the cross. And I would not give up. I was truly like a dog with a bone. I was not going to let go. And, um, and then the Holy Spirit showed me one night that I had bitterness and unforgiveness in my heart. Well, I didn't even know that I had it. I just thought that this other person needed to change. I didn't know that I had issues in my own heart. And because that bitterness is so strong and unforgiveness, it's like tentacles that grow down into your soul. I know that's why I was having those panic attacks, which were horrible and fear and waking up in the morning with the same thoughts and going to bed with the same thoughts. And it was awful. You know, Denise, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 says that our root of bitterness Mm -hmm. 
really makes it difficult for you to experience the presence of God or even to receive a touch of God. Mm -hmm. It says that in Hebrews 12, mm -hmm. 15. I, you know, I could kind of describe myself as, as somebody drowning. I was doing everything I could to stay afloat. And then the Holy Spirit showed me that I had bitterness and I forgiveness in my heart. I was able to see my problem in another perspective, forgive that person. And I went to bed that night. And this is the honest truth, home group. I woke up in another world. I woke up in a completely another world the next morning. My hands were absolutely normal. My feet were absolutely normal. This had gone on for more than a year with my hands and feet. It was so miserable. And all the fear was absolutely gone. And you know what? Nobody could have said to me, um, you know, well, your problem is unforgiveness. That's why you're sick. They didn't know that. I didn't know that. But the Holy Spirit, he searches the inward parts of our soul. Mm -hmm. And he knows exactly how to touch whatever poison is tormenting us in the, on the inside. Now, you know, Denise, you can just on your own go digging around to try to figure out what's wrong with you on the inside. Exactly. And you're just going to waste your time. You need to have the investigative work of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is an amazing investigator. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that he reveals deep things. Amen. He's able to plummet to the very depths of your soul and reveal to you what needs to be extracted and removed so you can receive your healing. God wants you to be well. He does. But the question was, what prohibits people? Can I say one more Let thing? Let me finish. Today? People are believing. They're waiting. Sometimes it's not about healing. Sometimes it's about deeper issues that are blocking the process. And so um, I just want to tell you that it was like the Holy Spirit stuck his invisible hand inside of my heart in the night. And then he just pulled out, dragged out all that bitterness and unforgiveness right out of my heart. And I was free. And I wrote this tiny little book. It's mm. just tiny. You can probably read it in about 45 minutes. And about, it's my testimony. And I've got so many um, responses from this book. It's called The Gift of Forgiveness. Yes, of people that have read this book. And it changed their lives. So it could help you. Maybe you don't need to forgive anybody or you don't have any forgiveness inside of you, uh, unforgiveness. But if you maybe even know somebody or you are dealing with that yourself, mm -hmm. I believe this might be a tool that can help you. Thank you, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. That's a powerful testimony. It really is. Okay, Joel, next question. Next question. What is the difference between a healing and a miracle? Well, to answer that question, we have to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay. And at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Apostle Paul lists the gifts of the Holy Spirit, nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And listen to what he says in verse 9. The second part of the verse says, To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. But wait, then look at verse 10. To another the working of miracles. Mm -hmm. So apparently there's a difference between the gifts of healing and the working of miracles because he separates these like they're in two separate categories. First of all, it doesn't say the gift of healing. It says plural gifts of healing. That means that the gift of healing can come with all different kinds of manifestations. One person will pray this way. Another person might be led to pray another way. Don't get limited. Don't get boxed in. The gifts of healing come in all different kinds of ways. But the word healing is the Greek word eaomai. Now, anybody who knows Greek immediately says, wow, that is amazing. Because the word eaomai means to be cured well, a cure is not instantaneous. A cure is something that is progressive. It could be translated as the word remedy. A remedy is something that is progressive. And the word eaomai, here translated healing, means to progressively heal. It even means to be doctored, mm. to be doctored. So you have to think about a doctor. If you go to see the doctor because you're sick, what do you expect of your doctor? Do you expect to your doctor to instantaneously heal you? No. Mm -hmm. But you usually expect your doctor will be able to diagnose what's wrong with you and to prescribe medication, which if you receive it, will begin to progressively reverse your condition or over a period of time, you'll begin to get better because you're being doctored 
cured progressively. This tells us the gift of healing is a manifestation of the Spirit that is progressive. Wherein you lay hands on someone, and when you release your faith, you can literally say, when I'm finished praying for you, you're going to begin to get better immediately. You may not be instantaneously well, but from this moment forward, power is being released into you that is going to begin to reverse your condition and day by day, hour by hour, progressively, you're going to begin to get better. And much of Jesus' ministry was healing. Mm -hmm. People that he touched, and from the moment he touched them, from that moment forward, their life began to get stronger and they began to get more healthy. And a great example of this is the lepers that Jesus healed. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, as they went, they were healed. It was not a miracle. A miracle is instant. This was a healing, the Greek word eaomai. And I think this is so liberating because the Bible says that we're to lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. In the majority of cases, believers are not going to move in the working of miracles. They're going to move in healing which means you're equipped, you are authorized, you are empowered to lay hands on the sick and to say, when I'm finished praying for you, things are going to begin to change. A power is being deposited into you right now that is going to begin to reverse your condition and from this moment forward physically, you're going to begin to get better. You can release your faith for that. You may not be able to believe for an instantaneous miracle, but you can believe for what I'm talking about. And it is listed as the gifts of healing in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. Well, then what is a miracle? Well, let's look at it. Verse 10 says, to another the working of miracles. Well, that's not what the Greek says. It's not. The Greek says the energizing of powers. Mm. Mm. The word energeia, which describes a divine energy. Mm. The word dunamis which describes like an invasion of supernatural power. You put the two words together. The working of miracles is a sudden instantaneous burst of dynamic supernatural powers that instantaneously overrides the rules of nature, the rules of science, and does in one moment what could never naturally take place. It is instant. It is the working of powers. That's really what the Greek says. Here it's translated the working of miracles. It is a divine operation of power that instantaneously makes something happen. If it was a physical miracle, it would be somebody who physically could never be made well, but in one moment, suddenly they're made well. But the working of miracles can include more than the healing of the body. For example, when Jesus took the food in his hands and blessed it, instantaneously. There was a divine operation of powers that overrode the laws of nature. And what was Jesus in Jesus' hands began to multiply. When Jesus walked on the water, it was an operation of divine power that instantaneously overrode the laws of nature and science. And the atoms in that water solidified so Jesus could walk across that water like walking on pavement. It is the overriding of laws, the overriding of nature, the overriding of science, and in an instantaneous moment, something comes to pass. So there's a big difference between a healing and a miracle. A healing, the Greek word aeomai, describes something that is progressive, that takes place over a period of time. It is just as supernatural as a miracle, but it's progressive. A miracle is something that happens instantaneously because of a divine burst of power that instantly overrides nature and does something that could never naturally instantly be done. Denise. That's so exciting, Rick, because I've seen God do miracles in my life, and they were instantaneous. And, I mean, when he healed my face, a disease that I had for 13 years on my neck and on my forehead and my face. And it was quite ugly. And I, I didn't get jobs because of it. I was turned down from singing groups because of it. And, and I believe God's word. I mean, I was putting God's word in my mouth and in my eyes, but I didn't see anything happen. But one night I went to bed just like I had for the last 13 years with this disease that the doctors couldn't help me. I had already been to all of them. I'd already taken all their medicine and all of their treatments. 
Man, it didn't help me, but I went to bed that night, and I don't know when Jesus did it, but uh, in the night, somewhere, he touched me, and I woke up the next morning, and I was completely clean. My face was completely clean. My forehead, my my neck, uh, it was, I was com- instantly healed somewhere in the night. Now, some people say, Denise, I don't want a healing, I want a miracle. Well, you know what? These are gifts of the Holy Spirit. He's the one who decides what you get. Whether you get it instantly or progressively, that's up to God. You just need to use your faith to receive whatever He has to give you. I personally believe that miracles usually occur when there's something that could never be accomplished just with your own faith. For example, a a spine that is broken. God instantly puts it together. A face filled with poison. But... The gift of healing seems to partner with people's faith. For example, if you have a cold, the gift of healing begins to work in you as you release your faith and you begin to believe to get better. The working of miracles seems to be usually in something totally humanly impossible. Anyway, another reason people have the anticipation to always get something miraculous is because miracles are what are usually portrayed on television. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because they're instant and it can be caught with a camera. So that's what you always show on television. How do you document on camera a healing? Take a long time. It would take a long, 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 long time. So you don't document those. People always talk about the instantaneous, and it kind of gives a false expectation that everything God does is instantaneous. But some of what God does is progressive, And while you're progressively being healed, by the way, you're also renewing your mind. You're dealing with issues in your life. It's a whole package deal. And then there is the instantaneous, which is called the working of miracles or the divine operation of powers. Okay, next question. I just want to say, I think this is very encouraging because so often people say, I didn't get my healing. No, they didn't get a miracle. The healing can happen. Most people who say they didn't get their healing, they got their healing. Mm-hmm. They didn't get a miracle. But so often people say, I didn't get my healing, and they just stop believing. Whenever they really mean they didn't get a miracle. But you can keep on believing for your healing. Absolutely. Amen. Okay, so is all sickness caused by the devil? Well, in one way, yes. In another way, no. Uh, before the fall, the devil did not have a rule in the earth, and there was no sickness. All sickness, all disease, everything bad started after Adam's fall when the door was opened for the reign of death and darkness to come into the world. Sin. But there are a lot of things you can do yourself to get sick. If you don't take care of yourself, if you don't eat right, if you don't exercise, if you never give a pause to your body, you can do things that open the door for sickness. So we have to use our heads and remember that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We need to take care of our temples. Next question. What is the greatest physical miracle you've personally seen? Well, I can quickly answer that question. I've seen two that definitely impacted my life. The first was in our first big evangelistic crusade, which we held in the former Soviet Union. Denise and I have seen a lot of miracles. But there was a man who came the first night, and he had broken his spine. His uh, spinal cord was broken. And the bottom half of his body was just dead, basically. And he walked on crutches, and he used those crutches like they were his legs. He swung his body, and he used those crutches like they were legs. Well, he came in the first night into that big, big meeting and sat over on that side of the auditorium. And the very first night, he came forward, and he got saved. And my heart just went out to him because he was struggling, trying to get down to the front through all those people on his crutches. Second night, he came in. And he came forward, and he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. The third night, he came forward, said he wanted to be water baptized, showed up the next day at the swimming pool where we were baptizing, and he hurled his body into the water to be baptized. We were really watching the full work of God in this man's Mm -hmm. life. And everyone in the crowd noticed him because every evening he came in after everybody else was seated so that he didn't have to fight the crowd. Mm -hmm. Well, on the last night of those services, I was actually dismissing the meeting, and I had a vision, an open vision. I saw somebody coming forward and laying their crutches on the stage. I didn't know who it was because there were a lot of people with crutches. And I said, I don't know who you are, 
but be it to you according to your faith. And in that moment, I heard a shriek and I looked over to my side and that man's arm shot up into the air. The crutches fell out from under his arms and the bottom half of his body, which had been dead for 19 years, was instantaneously quickened by the Holy Spirit. And he came walking and leaping and praising God on his legs down to the front and laid the crutches on the stage. And it was electrifying to the entire crowd because everybody had seen him come in late every night. And everyone saw. And I have to tell you, when that miracle took place, it was very hard to dismiss that service. Nobody wanted to go home because such faith was released in that moment. That was a life-transforming moment for me. The second miracle which we witnessed, occurred with our driver's daughter. Hmm. This was in Latvia, and he had taken his little girl swimming. She drowned, and she and her cousin together stepped into a hole, and they drowned. They pulled them out of the river, took them to the hospital, put them on pumps, put them on all kinds of machinery which made them breathe, but they were brain dead. After 30 days... Our driver's daughter sat straight up in her bed and said, I'm hungry. Can you please give me something to eat? It was like a real case of somebody being raised from the dead. That dramatically impacted my life. But guys, I just noticed we're out of time. But here's the good news. Jesus has healing for you right now. That's right. He may have a miracle for you. He's the one who distributes these things according to his will. He knows whether you need something instantaneous he knows whether you need something progressive. But if you'll embrace what he has to give, whatever it is, it'll work in you starting right now. I want to pray for you to be healed, and I want Denise to pray for you to receive a miracle. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, based on the word of God, <clears throat> I pray that from this moment forward, my friend, will progressively begin to get better, that the power of God will begin to reverse that affliction. Amen until they are progressively totally made well in Jesus name. Amen. Peace. Amen. You know, miracles often work with words of knowledge and I have a word of knowledge that some God's touching somebody's eyes. Receive that right now. That's your miracle. You take that right now for your eyes to be completely healed in Jesus name. Amen. This has been so good tonight. And hey, guys, when we come back tomorrow night, tomorrow night we're going to be answering questions about demons. It's going to be good. Don't miss tomorrow night, but go to bed and sleep well tonight. Take your sleeping pill, which is Psalm 4.8. It says, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, and the Lord will keep me safely. That's your sleeping pill. That's your medication to go to bed tonight. So go to bed, sleep well. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed that teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.